So, you left Guild Wars 2 and now you're planning to come back? You should never leave Guild Wars 2. Nah, I'm just kidding my friend, we're all glad to have you back. Right in time to join us for the new Gantha expansion that was recently announced. Hey guys, it's Kyo again and in this video I will help you get back into the game and get you through the things you have missed over the last few years and where to focus on now you are back. Luckily, Guild Wars 2 is easy to get back into. There is no gear treadmill and other difficult grinding mechanics. Do you like the content? In the top left of this video, you will see how to help the channel out. Anyway, let's kick this video off with a timeline with key moments of the game and what has been released over the last few years. Don't care about that? Use the timestamps in the video description to hop straight to the tips. And stay with me here. In this summary, I'll be concise and cover eight years of Guild Wars 2 in just a few minutes. I think it's good to catch up on the happenings over the years for returning players that have been out of the loop for a while. So over the last years a lot of things have changed since the release of Guild Wars 2 in 2012. If you left back then, well a lot has changed for the better. So the game released in 2012 and shortly after the first Living World season was released. The Living World are stories, missions and quests, whatever you want to call it, about new and existing characters. You can consider the Living World seasons as DLC or mini expansions. The Living World also introduces us to new achievements, skins, exclusive mounts and more recently, strike missions. Yep, you heard that right, the game has mounts now. More about mounts and strike missions in a minute. One of the key features of Season 1 was the release of Fractals of the Mists. These mini dungeons can be rather challenging, grant you exclusive rewards and introduce players to Ascended Armor. This first Living World season ran for about two years before it ended in 2014. Sadly, due to a lot of changes in the game, this first season is not playable anymore. Some missions have been made playable again and are now unlockable in the Icebrood Saga, the latest season in the Living World series. So, as you might guess, after Living World Season 1, there comes Living World Season 2. It started shortly after the ending of Season 1 in 2014. Unlike Living World Season 1, this is still playable. You must purchase it from the gem store if you did not log in during the time of the release of that season. But it is worth checking out, especially as a new or returning player. Living World Season 2 ended early 2015 and all of ArenaNet's focus shifted to delivering the first expansion for Guild Wars 2, Heart of Thorns. Heart of Thorns released in October of 2015 and introduced us to the Revenant profession. This profession can channel legends, heroes and villains of the past to his or her bidding. Next to that, we also got the opportunity to level beyond the maximum level of 80 with Masteries. Heart of Thorns Masteries allowed us to glide all over the Maguma jungle and later on all over the world. Also, we got access to 9 elite specializations. These are unique trade lines that enhance your profession's skills and grant them new abilities. It basically gives you a complete new profession and a different playstyle for that profession. I covered all professions and their elite specializations in one video a while ago. Check that one out in the charts if you want more information on the matter. And last but not least, the expansion also introduced the player to raiding. Living World Season 3 started mid-2016 and continued on the Heart of Thorns story and you were required to have the expansion in order to play it. This Living World Season gave access to two new raids, a number of new areas, stories and fractals. You do not need this season in order to play the new raids or fractals. Heart of Thorns is required though. The season ran for a year and soon after the ending, a new expansion was ready to be released. Just a few months after the ending of Living World Season 3, the Path of Fire expansion was released. Path of Fire was released late in 2017 and introduced the player to new raids, 9 more elite specializations, new masteries and mounts. I was never a big advocate for mounts, but ArenaNet did an amazing job on these mounts. In other games, mounts are used to travel a huge distance on a specific map. Guild Wars 2 has fast travel at any time. Why would you use a mount when you could just travel there in 2 clicks? The mounts in Guild Wars 2 are designed to solve puzzles, cross distances that cannot be reached with fast travel and are now a core part of the game. A well-balanced decision and implementation if you ask me. The 9 new elite specializations add more depth to your favorite professions. These specializations are completely different than the ones from the Heart of Thorns expansion. So both expansions add something different to your profession. Soon after the release of Path of Fire, Guild Wars 2 moved on to Living World Season 4 which introduced us to more new stories, raids and fractals. 
This season started late in 2017, in November, just two to three months after the release of the Path of Fire expansion. Like Season 3, you don't need this season in order to play the new raids or fractals, just the expansions. This season also introduced us to two new mounts. The first mount was the Roller Beetle, an extremely fast mount that allows you to get across the map in just a minute. It is best to use this mount on flat terrain to avoid bumping into objects. And the second mount is the Sky Scale. The Sky Scale was the first mount that could fly still in the air and was also extremely controllable. Whereas the Griffin from Path of Fire is extremely fast and needs momentum to move around, the sky scale is rather slow but easily controllable. This season was also rather long and ran until mid 2019. So, next up, an expansion? Nope. It was another Living World update. This one is called the Icebrood Saga, and this is where we currently are. This season started late in 2019. Here we follow the story of Ryland, uh, a relative of Ritlock Brimstone, the jar we know since the release of Guild Wars 2. We do not know how this one will conclude just yet. The Icebrood Saga introduces us to new endgame content, the Strike Missions. And Strike Missions are the middle ground between Fractals and Raids. It is easier to get into than Raids and can be found in several difficulties. Some bosses are easier to beat than others. You and a squad of 10 face a boss that uses new mechanics but also existing ones that can be found in Raids and Fractals. Just recently, ArenaNet announced a new expansion that is coming to Guild Wars 2. We are 99% sure that it is going to be centered around Kantha, a continent that was accessible in the original Guild Wars. This Asian themed expansion had some of the most beautiful environments that I've ever seen in a game. I'm expecting that ArenaNet will continue on the idea of elite specializations and mounts, but I cannot say that for certain just yet. I'm also expecting that the expansion will release early 2021 or maybe later in 2020. Check out my video on the matter in the info charts. So that is where we are right now, a recap of all the releases. And now where should you start? It is best to start where you left off. Do you already have a level 80 character and have played the story of the original Guild Wars 2 game? If this is not the case, do that first. It gives you a solid foundation of what the story is about. You get some fair gear and you can master your profession in the meantime. I understand it is hard to restart the game at say level 60 and work your way up to level 80. If this is the case, I would advise you to start over on a new character, preferably with a different race and a different profession. If you choose for a different race and profession you will start in a new area of the world and got another profession to learn and master. This way you won't have to redo an area you have already done before and you can basically start fresh again without deleting your older character. You can always pick that one up later. Make sure you play through your personal story so you know what's going on in the later stages of the game. I highly discourage to use your level 80 boost right away. You have to take a step back and experience the game again. Enjoy relearning existing and new mechanics. If you use your boost, you will rush into content you might not be ready for. What other people have suggested is to use your boost or get a level 80 character and do the first Path of Fire mission as soon as possible. This mission gives you access to the Raptor mount. After they get that mount, some players get back to their low level character and play through the story with a mount. Mounts are unlocked account wide, so you can use it on a fresh new character to go through the older content much faster. Although it comes in real handy to have a raptor early on, you might get exposed to spoilers and mechanics that can be harder for new and returning players. I'll leave this one up to you. Do you want to go through older content much faster but might get exposed to some spoilers and unfamiliar mechanics? Use a level 80 character or boost to get the raptor. You want to play through the game as you are supposed to play the game? You might want to hold off on getting the raptor just yet. Let me know if you need any help deciding in the comments. And also, don't forget to join a guild while you are at it. Guilds are usually very friendly and helpful. If you have a question, you can always ask your guild. The guild members will help you out with any issues you have. Are you level 80 and ready to dive deeper into Guild Wars 2? Okay, now we can start thinking about endgame content. Although I would advise you to play through the complete story of the expansion first. Start with Heart of Thorns and after that play the Path of Fire expansion. This way you will play through the story in a chronological manner. I don't want to force you into buying the expansions, but the story gives you some good fundamentals of the core understanding of masteries, elite specializations and mounts. It is basically the game holding your hand and telling how most of the things work. 
Also, a fully mastered elite specialization is almost mandatory for endgame content. But do you need to buy two expansions for 30 to 40 euros, dollars or pounds? Nope. A while ago, ArenaNet bundled the two expansions into one. Depending on where you live, you can get both expansions for about 30 euros, dollars or pounds. You can get the core game, which I assume you already have as a returning player, the Heart of Thorns expansion and the Path of Fire expansion for just 30 bucks. Really, there is no better moment to hop into the game right now. I created a video a while ago where I explained the differences between these two expansions. Back then, the expansions weren't bundled into one just yet, but the video still gives you great pros and cons of each expansion. If you are a real lore enthusiast, you can consider buying Living World Season 2, 3 and 4. I discussed the release dates of these seasons in the timeline section of this video. I personally think that Season 4 was one of the better seasons in terms of story and gameplay features. You can also obtain the Roller Beetle and the Sky Skill in Season 4. If you are not into all that lore, you don't have to purchase these. However, I do advise you to catch up on the Icebrood Saga. This is currently ongoing and has new episodes every 2-3 to three months. More on that later. Anyway, moving on, we're talking about you now. So, start by mastering your new Elite Specialization, play through the story, Get hero points to upgrade your new elite specialization, play around with it and create your own build or look for one on the internet. Got a few mounts, got masteries and your elite specialization? Now you should be ready for endgame content. I would advise you to start with Fractals of the Mists first. I understand that you want to hop into raiding right away, but this is really the best type of content to start for new and returning players. These mini dungeons or fractals can be found in Lion's Arch and are really challenging in later levels. Start at fractal level 1 to 20 and work your way up to the top. Here, you can start gathering your first pieces of ascended armor. Most of it is going to be weapons, rings and accessories. These are way better than the exotic or rare rings you could Currently have on you. You might even get lucky and get a piece of ascended armor while you are playing these fractals. I would advise you to craft the rest of your first ascended armor set. You will also need it to progress further in fractals of the mists and in future raiding. You don't want to rely on RNG or grinding too much just yet. Also you want to write prefix right? Crafting allows you to do that. Ascended armor cannot be bought from other players, you have to craft or grind it yourself. Although it might be pricey to craft it yourself, it is the fastest and most efficient way to do it in my opinion. Depending on your profession, you need a different crafting discipline to craft that armor. If you are a guardian, warrior or revenant, you will need the armor smithing discipline to create heavy ascended armor. For medium professions like rangers, engineers and thieves, you will need the leather working discipline to craft their ascended armor. And for mesmers, elementalists and necromancers, you will need tailoring to craft light ascended armor. If you just returned to Guild Wars 2 and you already got the things I just mentioned, you already came a long way, you can basically hop straight back into the game. A number of new fractals have been released over the last few years. For example, the Twilight Oasis and the Siren's Reef fractal. So with some ascended armor and some agony resistance, you should be good to go and try those out. After you are done with playing fractals, you can give raids a shot too. If you have been gone for a while, there were some raid wings added over the years, but but I still advise you to start with Wing 1. This wing was released when Heart of Thorns came out and it is still one of the easier and more accessible wings. So start there. I dedicated a complete video to this subject, so please check that one out if you want to start raiding. It has everything you need to know before you start. Now, how do you stay in the loop? Now, you have your character at level 80, played through the story, got masteries, got mounts and you already played some endgame content. How do you stay on track with what is happening in Guild Wars 2? Well, the first thing I would advise you to do is playing the Icebrood Saga. This is the newest season of the Living World. Although it is not officially called a Living World episode or season, it follows the same structure and release window of the Living World. The Icebrood Saga is just a bit bigger in terms of story, maps and features. Although older Icebrood Saga episodes are not free anymore, I would advise you on buying those. These older episodes give a good foundation for the story you are going to play through and it all is going to lead up to the upcoming expansion. And also don't forget to play the latest episode as well, that one unlocks as soon as you log in. At the release of new episodes of the Icebrood Saga or the Living World, the episodes are always free to play and free to keep 
keep. If you don't log in during the release of the episode or about 1-2 to two months after that, it becomes locked and you will have to purchase it from the gem store. I have not paid for a single episode in my life, yet I have them all unlocked. This is because I almost log in daily, so that is within the 1-2 to two month release window when the episode is free. So if you intend to leave Guild Wars 2 for a bit and return a few months after, make sure to log in and keep an eye out on the release of a new episode. Just log into a character, you don't have to play, and log out again. There, you have the latest episode unlocked. When you return to Guild Wars 2 after your break, you won't have to purchase recently released episodes. You can play through the story at your own pace and play the most recent release as well. It is also good to keep a few external sources on hand. And with this, I mean the official Guild Wars 2 forums and the Guild Wars 2 subreddit. Both of these are very active and will post news about the game, upcoming releases, and a lot of memes of course. If you are not super invested in keeping up on those and checking them manually, there are also other options. While you are playing Guild Wars 2, you might run into a nice group of people and you might have joined their guild. Usually, guilds have Discord servers where you can communicate with each other about the game or general gaming stuff. If this is the case, members of that Discord server usually post the most recent updates in there. There is also a big Guild Wars 2 Discord server that will keep you up to date and has a lot of friendly people that help returning players like you get back into the game. I got a Discord server myself you can sign up for too. Both Discords can be found in the video description. And last but not least, try to subscribe to YouTube channels that cover the latest Guild Wars 2 news. For example, Wooden Potatoes. He has been covering Guild Wars 2 and Guild Wars for about 10 years. The official Guild Wars 2 channel is also a good place to start as well. Anyway, these are the things that should get you back into the game and keep you up to date. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I love to help new and returning players to get back into Guild Wars 2. If you got any tips yourself, don't forget to share them as well. If the video helped you, you know what to do. Give it a like, subscribe and share it with your guildies. And for now, I would like to thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you all in the next one. Peace!